Hi everybody, it's John Honig from the Scenic Factory. We're going to make a deciduous tree out of tree roots. Um, usually we do pine trees, but uh, the, the tree roots make great deciduous trees. Um, we're going to do a HO scale type size tree just to save some time on the video. I do have a 135th scale I'm working on. It kind of follows the same same techniques. Um, these particular roots, I don't know the kind of tree they're from, shrub. I take these from the shrub version of them. Um, they're black in color. Uh, these have been glycerin treated, just like the plumosa from everything else, which makes makes it so all this fine foliage, not foliage, so roots, you can uh, you can use. It doesn't all fall off. Some it, It's a little brittle, but you can pull it and tear it, as you'll see, and uh, it, it's very useful. Also, when making the tree out of this, it's got very natural curves to it and though you can't see very well the bark actually has a bark texture or the root has a bark texture I lightly dry brushed a little piece to try to try to show you um, but it's got a nice grainy texture um, and these are actually quick and easy um, a piece like this would come in a larger larger box that we have that the 12 inch the um, again a box like this which is the, the much larger will have a, a lot of pieces in it. A bunch of the big ones, small ones, everything's mixed. Um, there's also the smaller box. Um, if you're making HO trees or foliage or you know just, just roots on a water's edge or um, a lot of stuff in here. Um, but any roots will work. Um, the benefit as you'll see of these is that it has the very fine roots on it that we're actually going to use throughout building the tree process. They're, they're very handy. Um, regular tree roots are very sporadic. They're great for dead trees or big big pieces. Um, I've just found that these are, are very useful. Uh, so here, we're going to get right into it. I recommend cutting the tree roots or the bigger pieces with a pair of pruners just to get straight cuts on them. Um, I trim up and use around with my favorite little nippers also. And you're also going to, you know, we'll, we'll do some work with scissors on this. But what we want to do first is get the basic size. Um, I'm going to ballpark it. Again, this is going to be a smaller scale tree. So, as you'll see, this is a, it's very flat. You need to you can't really use it as is. So that's what we're going to build here. Um, so what I'm going to do, snip it around. get our basic shape. Now once you get to the fine roots, they can be torn apart, everything else also. Um, or if there's pieces I don't need, I don't need the pruners, but we're going to start with a piece about that size. Um, this piece on the bottom here is just too low, we won't use that. I don't take much of the inner, inner roots out yet. Um, we will thin those out because depending on how the canopy goes, we'll keep these and we can move these around. But see how we can move these around and they don't really fall apart, we can still use them. Uh, what you're also going to need, what we use in this is uh, super glue, the gel version. Not regular super glue, it's too liquidy. Super glue gel. Now to hold on to these, unlike the pine trees, you can't clamp these as good without crushing the trunk. Um, unless you leave a piece on, make these longer also. So for ones that are actually going to stay this size, initially I just use a clothespin. And then we're going to clamp that. What you don't want for this, we'll just use a regular clamp. These clamps are handy too, but they're way too strong. If you were to clamp the tree, you just crush it and the bark would fall right off it. So, we'll do it like that, make it easier. Now, all pieces are used or useful. Piece we just trimmed off that's that size little, we can glue that on as part of this tree. We can snip it, we can put a foliage on this. This could be a shrub, small tree. So all of this is always usable. Never throw anything out. So what I like to do is first find another big branch to start to get to 3D. Make it nice and simple. Um, now what I'm going to do, even though a lot of this bottom is useful, I want to get one that's got some, some intricate work on it here. I don't know the exact size yet. around. Let 
this particular one we're going to use up top a little bit because this has nice branching out structure. I'll pull a little bit of the fine stuff out. What you want to do is now you have a piece like this. When you cut it, you can also cut these at angles so you can you know, tilt them when we're gluing them onto the trunk. Basically, we're just going to be gluing these on. Um, we want to find a good spot. This has really nice structure here, but in order to start to three-dimensionalize it, actually this piece looks like it would probably fit better on this side. Which is what we're going to do. Now with the glue, very little bit, a dab, you want to put enough on, so it's just a little tiny bubble, because when you match it up to the trunk, you just want it to fill the void. Okay, we're going to pick a spot. Since these are smaller branches, I'm going to keep these up top just a little bit. Stick it and hold it for a second. And it's just like regular super glue. It takes a couple extra seconds. And what I do is I get it just till it's going to hold on its own, and then I can move along and it'll finish drying on its own. Bang, that quick. Okay. And this is how we start to three-dimensionalize it. Um, I'm going to look around. Another. And don't worry about it for too long at the moment. We're going to trim this up a little bit. I, you're, you're better off not cutting off too much and finding out later. Um, a you know, piece like this. We need, we're going to build it out this way a little bit. That looks good. We're going to put a little angle on it. So it blends in better. There we go. Take the glue. Now just be careful where you glued the last one, although it's holding, you don't want to just go grab onto it now. Same thing here. Give it a minute to tack up. In any of these places where it's glued on the trunk, usually when the foliage gets put on it, you don't see it. But if you want, before you put the leaf foliage on or whatever we're going to use for that, you can dab a little flat black paint. Same with these spots that are where we snip off. It's usually always covered, but every now and then I'll, before I get into putting some canopy on it, I'll just dab a little flat black just to disguise it a little bit. Now that one we're going to leave long. I'm not really sure where it's going. Um, I want to put another larger branch. Structure only want to come out this side a little bit. Even little pieces like this. This is going to be the inner. I'm going to put a little angle on it. This will test fit. Get the glue. Just make sure you use the gel. Use the other stuff, it won't really work. for a minute. What's cool about this is it's actually pretty quick. And also, unlike, uh, I really like the sagebrush also, but you're kind of limited. You can, uh, you kind of have to use the way it's, it looks. It's kind of hard to add um, actual branch structure. Um, we're going to add some small, you know, look at it from the top, depending on what kind of tree you want to make. We're going to, we're going to bush this out a little. Now what we're going to do, once we get enough branch structure on, is we're actually going to use this fine root material and that's what we're going to use for the canopy so we're not actually going to use polyfiber or something that doesn't blend very well we're going to keep with the same same material um, although this is a blackish color very dark grayish black um, any parts of the trunk or branches you can lightly dry brush with gray acrylic which we do on some um, 
but if you're ever driving down the street and you're looking into the trees, it, nine out of ten times they almost look black, all the branch structure inside. Um, right, it's looking good. We'll get a couple more out here and then we'll start fine tuning it and adding a little canopy. This has got a lot of branch structure on it. So you can see from the back too. Go off the back here. All looks natural. Again, you can use any roots. Um, the benefit of these and the glycerin preserved is we can keep using all the fine, all the fine stuff. Um, and again, these you can snip little pieces. You could make. I mean, obviously, all these trees don't don't look like this. They're not big. They're intertwined, small, big, large, different color. Um, but the glycerin makes everything usable. Now what I did once we get this set is I have another one that I've pre-built to this stage. Um, because what I like to do is once we put some of the canopy on, I like it to dry for at least a couple hours before I continue. Most of the time it's overnight, just to make sure the super glue is totally set up. Although it's strong, you wind up handling it by accident, and next thing you know, you're damaging it. So usually I let it overnight, but a couple hours minimum. Let's I'll show you as we go along. This needs a little more holding. off since it's making us a little heavy. And again, if there's something you don't like, just snip it off. And a lot of this, once we put the canopy on, is going to be camouflaged. But you want to get as much tree or uh, branch structure as you can. Okay. Actually, these are going to snip down a little. And again, don't throw any of this stuff out. This stuff is all usable. As you'll see. Alright, this looks pretty good getting to the canopy stage. Um, I want to add something coming up here though. This is a little blank over here. Um, and in order to put some canopy on it, we, just like in nature, we need some kind of some kind of structure there to hold some of it. So even a little piece like this. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna test fit. Looks good, a little glue. And this piece will fill our void right here for branch structure. And again, you just you just need to hold it on there until it kind of stays on its own. Great. Okay, that'll dry in a couple minutes. Um. Now for time, that's pretty good. This is what we're going to go with at the moment. Um, just like everything else, you can keep going. You can keep going with the real fines. Um, if it's a really front foreground tree, keep going. Um, before I put some of the canopy on, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to get it closer without the focus being messed up. But this is great bark texture. Um, hopefully you can see it. It looks, uh, it looks like tree bark. And again, if you lightly dry brush it, keeps it dark but it adds a little bit of highlight like you know we, we did with this one so you can take it as far as you want 
Um, now I just want to look at it from overhead. I'm still not going to trim every little thing off of it. Um, here's where here's where this these roots are very helpful. Because what we do is we take the fines, which I you know we, we they get shipped with it. This doesn't get it doesn't get thinned out. Um, and basically, just like polyfiber, but it's roots. We're going to pull it apart because what we have here is a ton of miniature street tree structure which is what we're going to use for the canopy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. This should sit a little bit more, um, but we should be okay. Now, I don't pre-glue this. What I do is I pull it apart, take some pieces. I'm just going to drape it around. Up here, you'll pull this off. Some of the bigger pieces, we're just going to pull the, the, light, the light root stuff off, though. We won't, we won't put a stick of you know, a bigger piece up there, even though it's going to be covered. Um, what you want to do is just drape it, get it caught on the edges, caught on the edges of the branches. And this you can pull apart. Again, some of it will fall, but being treated with glycerin, most of it just stays together. And what we want to do is just like if you're making these with polyfiber. Just want to keep looking at it. Get some coming from these branches to the top. Keep it a little bit bushy like nature. Little pieces of bark stuck in there, just don't even worry about it because it's going to be covered. If it drives you nuts, just take some tweezers. Now when you're taking off these, you can just pull it. You can cut it, pull it. I like to do it just like polyfiber. Take it, spread it out a little bit. You don't need a lot. You know, as you'll see when we start to put, you know, put some foliage on it. This, uh, it just, this goes a ways. But just make sure you get enough of it on the branch structure. Now what we'll do is we'll get some of this in and. What I do first is I spray it with hairspray just to get it sticky and stuck in place as I build it up. I don't like using the spray adhesive till the end because if you were to do that every time, it starts to build this up too much. So to get it started, I just use a unscented extra hold, you know, just like you would use with anything else with hairspray. And we wanna, I guess I can do it right here. Just wanna spray it just to make sure that this is going to stay as we add some more. In the end we will be using adhesive which will make everything stick together. Right, drape it, push it. Okay. We'll just do a little bit more and then we'll switch to the foliage. Alright, this gives you the basic idea. We put probably another third foliage on. Places like this where it's a flat spot, take some, drape it onto the branch, hook it out here on these outside branches. Just keep building it until it looks like something you want. Um, doesn't take a lot, doesn't take that long. Um, what we'll do is, just to give you an idea size-wise, as I, I'll bring out some other ones also. This is HO. You know, size-wise, makes a nice HO tree, and again, you can go as big as small as you want. Um, like everything, if you're making it to scale, sometimes an actual scale measurement looks out of scale. So, use your eyes, use your what you want best. Um, give you another idea, the trusty tiger, 135th scale, not really cutting it. It's a little small. Um, if it was a small trunk and stringy, we could fit it in as a small tree. Um, before we move on, I'm going to show you one of the other ones, but in 135th scale, here's one we're working on for the Scenic Factory diorama. You can make whatever you want. Now here's one that's more of a 135th scale size. Um, again, same thing, big, uh, use a main trunk, snip it, you won't see the center, um, and all these are, we just glue it up, just keep going with it. Um, 
but this gives you an idea of what you can make and uh, you can make nice big ones. And what's nice is when you look through it, it's all intertwined with the with the black. It looks like tons of little branches, um, just like the real thing. So you can build whatever whatever you want. Now what I'm going to do is bring in one that has already dried. Okay, here's here's our tree that we're going to use to finish up. It's actually a little bit smaller than the one we just started. Um, as you can see, all the all the canopies on. It's hairsprayed. It's all set to go. Um, now foliage, whatever. Uh, it, it's personal preference. What I use, I do basically two different two different things. I use uh, first. I use caspia, ground up. Um, this is regular caspia, dyed green, unpreserved. This is plain Jane. Um, Nothing special here. This is stuff we have that we dye green. Um, what I do is take it, put it in a strainer, crumple it up, sift it out, and what it does is it gives me a, a fine, you know, gets all the stems out and uh, just makes a fine flocking basically that I use with uh, the Noak flock, um, their, their leaf flock. I mix that in too. Honestly, there's really nothing that I have ever found that is truly realistic. Uh, Sill floor makes the mats. That gets quite expensive if you're doing a big tree. Um, but it's all personal preference. You can make some pretty convincing convincing trees this way. Um, again, this is where it all comes to personal preference, but I'll show you how we're going to do, do my way, I guess. Um, now we use spray adhesive. Use whatever kind, 3M. This happens to be Elmer's. Just make sure it's clear. Uh, don't get carried away with it. I usually do this in a box. What I do is underside first. Um, I'll just give it a couple little dusts. Just to make sure it'll cover. Keep it neat. Again, don't glob it on. Use a little pan. And what I do is I start with the caspia first. Okay, I just sprinkle it. Try to get it underneath a little bit. A lot of this you won't see. This is just what we use to fill it out. So don't get super carried away. And if it goes on the branches or, or trunks that you don't want, don't worry. What we do in the end is the ones you do see that you don't want it in that spot, is I just go through with tweezers and we can pick it off. Suggest doing it in a pan. So you can save everything. And the reason I do both just gives it a little different texture. It's a little bit different color. Okay. Since I forgot my other pan, I have to use the same pan for both. Okay. And we're going to use a little of the note flake. Same thing. A little bit in. Not real carried away. You want to be able to see this branch structure through it. That's kind of the point. If you shake it or hammer it on there, a lot of it will fill in and you won't be able to see the structure underneath. Okay, give it a little tap. Right, you can see that adds a little bit underneath, gives us a starting point. What we want to do, uh, normally I would have a glove on. Just be careful with the glue. Same thing on top. Not a lot. And it's usually handy if you do this in a box. Doesn't make such a mess. I like to start with the caspia, so we'll just do that. We'll go back to this. Same thing. It's intertwined in a little. Falls down into the crevices. And if there's a big blank spot, you know, you're done with the tree, and you're like, ah, I'm missing a spot there. As far as foliage or, you know, the canopy not looking right, just rip off another little piece, stick it in there, shape it, a little dab of adhesive, and you're ready to go with more. All right, cast for you. Now we'll switch to the flake. 
And again, this gives it a little more 3D. It's a little different color, a little different texture, but blends in nicely with the with the ground up caspia. Again, you do this whatever color, fall, burgundy. And again, we don't want to thicken it up so much we can't see in it. We really want to see into this because we want to see some of that structure. Now these edges, make sure you don't cover the whole branch with, with uh, bulge and some of these lower ones that might not have a leaf on it, but it's still got the little tiny branches. Keep those open. And then we'll give it a little tap. Just give it a little tap. Stays on there good. And there you have it. Again, overlook at the end, there's a little light spot where this branch has been glued. You'll A, you'll never see it, but if it concerns you, tiny little dab of flat black paint on any joint you see like that. But you can see, uh, but you can see right through it, so you know, it gives you a nice canopy, gives you a nice tree. Um, let's see if I can hold this enough to, I'm going to try to. This is kind of a short, stubby tree. I'm trying to show you scale wise again a little bit. Um, in front of somebody's house on a layout. But, uh, but again, uh, just keep building these however you want. You can, you know, the, the, the nice part about being able to glue branches on is you can make anything. You know, the tree structure is intricate as you want to get. Um, now, what I do is just. I mean, it's just about set to go because the spray adhesive dries pretty quick. Um, I'll let it sit for a couple hours and then uh, ready to go. These are a little bit heavier. These are a little bit top heavier. What I would recommend, 16th inch hole in the bottom um, and probably at least a 3 quarter to 1 inch mounting pin because um, these are a little bit little bit heavy once you add all the, all the stuff to it. So, um, And that's about it. Uh, again, here's the... Here's how we went. This is what we wind up with. Um, I'll show you this 135th scale one more time just to give you an idea of the two together here. It's big. And here's the smaller one we just did. But well, gives you an idea. Um, and it's all usable, it's all flexible. So hope this helps. It's just an easy, simple, simple way. And thanks for watching.